Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 8, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. DNS over HTTPS is in the news again, or not, depending on how you interpret an analysis done by Chihu 360 or NetLab 360 of a recent Godlua Linux Trojan. One of the special features of this particular piece of malware is that it has a number of redundant command and control channels. Now, one thing that it does according to the NetLab 360 analysis is it uses DNS over HTTPS to retrieve a text record with the particular command control server's name. Now, curl co-developer Daniel Sternberg actually noted that the protocol being used here is not actual DNS over HTTPS. Instead, it's a more sort of a homemade protocol that's unique to this particular malware. It does send a request to a website over HTTPS, and then in return, you do get the host name of the command control server it's supposed to connect to, but it does not use any of the public DNS over HTTPS servers, and also the protocol being used here would not be compatible with any of these servers. For a defender, this is an important distinction because if the attacker would use DNS over HTTPS, then you could use any defensive techniques that you typically use for DNS over HTTPS, like the blacklists that John Bambanek published last week and that I mentioned. This looks more like a standard command control channel over HTTPS, so these techniques wouldn't work and you would just have to look for standard HTTPS analysis techniques. In the show notes, I will link to two articles here the first one is the original analysis by NetLab360. The second one is analysis of that command control channel, basically showing that it's not really DNS over HTTPS. That article is, as far as I know, currently only available in German. And about Two weeks ago, Cisco patched two vulnerabilities, one of which was an authentication bypass vulnerability, and the second vulnerability was a remote file upload vulnerability, which could lead to arbitrary code execution. For these two vulnerabilities, and that's CVE 2019-1619, as well as the second vulnerability, CVE 2019-1620, for these two vulnerabilities, we now have essentially exploits available. The original advisory by the individual that found these vulnerabilities and reported them to Cisco now updated their advisory and included sufficient details to essentially make exploitation of these vulnerabilities pretty straightforward. The only lucky part here is that this is not one of Cisco's most popular products. It does affect the Cisco Data Center Network Managers version 11.1. One, one and below. And talking about recently patched vulnerabilities, also about two weeks ago, Magento came out with a patch for its shopping cart software and it fixed two vulnerabilities. One was a cross site scripting vulnerability, the second one was a deserialization vulnerability affecting FAR paths. FAR, P H A R, is PHP archives and they have been used for this type of deserialization vulnerabilities in the past. Now, they're often not all that straightforward to exploit, in particular in this case, but we do have a detailed description of a possible exploit now that takes advantage of the stored cross-site scripting vulnerability to then actually exploit the deserialization vulnerability and in the end achieve remote code execution. Pretty interesting exploit path here. If you're using Magento, certainly make sure that you update. This platform has in particular been sort of a favorite target of uh, some of the malware we have seen recently, like uh, some of the keystroke loggers for credit cards. 
and uh, with the exploit available now certainly this will be added to the attackers repertoire and well, uh, our handlers also have been busy over the long weekend and published a number of blog posts. I would like to point out uh, two written by Didi about XSL and XSLT files, in particular, how they actually can get executed. While it's not a new technique, it's uh, still not sort of easily detected by anti-malware. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.